All right, we've talked about uh, classifiers and how to measure their performance in the mathematics and hopefully some good intuition uh, behind uh, that process. And now it's time to do a little bit of coding on the Python and NumPy side of things. So let's go ahead and shift over to the live demo. Okay, so the, the execution context here uh, for my Jupyter uh, notebook is still uh, where we left it the last time we were there. So we already have all the data uh, loaded in. We already have uh, trained up a classifier. We've gotten scores out of that classifier. And the first thing to do is to uh, look at the distribution of scores that we actually have. So let's go ahead and create a plot. There's this nice uh, function provided by matplotlib called hist. So scores is the, the variable that contains all of the, the scores that we have. Uh, and uh, this parameter bins, this is the uh, number of histogram bins that we're going to split our samples into. So let me uh, go ahead and execute, or actually let's add some labels here. And the Y label is account. And, and there we go. So we have, uh, this, this is all of the scores that were output by our model for our training set samples. The higher scores are going to have a higher probability of being labeled as uh, positives by the model and things to the far left, the low scores will be uh, labeled as negative and exactly where we put the threshold is certainly up to us. Looking at this distribution, one thing that sticks out is the, the long tail here on the right hand side. So that sort of suggests that we do have some real positives sort of hanging out in our data. The other, the other thing that sort of sticks out in my mind is the, the fact that we've got these two modes right here that seems a little bit odd to me. I don't have a good explanation, but that's something that in a deeper analysis we actually want to pursue as to what's happening there. So this is the entire distribution of scores, but as we did in the previous video, we actually wanted to want to split out the, the true positives, the, the, the real uh, ground truth positives from the ground truth negatives. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. So we're going to do list comprehension to make this happen. So we're going to use list comprehension in order to uh, to extract out the scores for the positive samples and the scores for the negative uh, samples. So let me write the code and then we'll talk about uh, what it all means. Okay, so uh, what we are doing is we're looping over uh, all of uh, the tuples that this enumerate outs gives us. So remember that outs is the, uh, the, the true label uh, for, for each of our samples. And uh, so that, that is a, a list in and of itself. What enumerate does, as you saw in your homework assignment, is that it produces uh, a list of tuples uh, each tuple contains the index in the list and the actual value in the list. So we're iterating over those two uh, elements there. We're going to insert into our destination list. Uh, we already have this array scores. Uh, we're going to index into that using the, the uh, index uh, from, uh, from the for loop. Uh, but we're only going to include the scores for which the output is greater than zero. And, and if you recall the, the outs, we set those uh, to be one if uh, we have motion of the robot uh, and zero otherwise. So, so this is giving us the scores for the, uh, for the cases that are, tr are trues in the real world. Let's do the same thing for the negative side. Just copy that and edit. So we're, we're doing the same uh, iteration, uh, but now uh, the, 
the criterion is uh, whether the, the output value is equal to zero. All right, so now we have our, our two lists here. Um, let's look at scores uh, shape. So we had 9,817 scores pause shape. Oops, that is a list, not a NumPy array. So we have to look at length, the length. So we only have uh, 2,710 uh, positives. And we have 7,000 plus uh, negatives. Okay, so so now let's let's build a, a picture that has two histograms in it. So we're going to generate a histogram of scores positive. That'll have forty one bins. And I'm going to assign it an alpha value of 0 0.5. This is this tells us uh, whether or not we can see through the uh, in, any of the uh, parts of the histogram. So 0 0.5 means it's partially transparent, halfway. A one would mean uh, it is not transparent; it's opaque. And a zero, you wouldn't actually be able to see the histogram. And I'm also going to give it a label, and this ends up getting used for the. Uh, for the legend. And we're going to do the same thing for the negative side. And we'll give that a different label. And then finally, we're going to cheat here and grab labels. And add a legend. And I'm going to tell Matplotlib where I want the legend to be and what the font size is. But the legend itself, the elements, the text in the legend actually come from the labels that we have over here. So let's execute that. Uh, and there we go. So the positives are shown in blue here. The, uh, the negatives are shown in orange. And what you'll notice, we talked before about the long tail of the distribution. You can see that, uh, that the positives indeed uh, are sitting there in the long tail, which, which is a, a, a hopeful result. Uh, and you can also see that a lot that the two modes uh, for the negatives, those fall to the left of the mode for the positives. So that gives us a little bit of uh, hope as well. So we could theoretically put the threshold anywhere we wanted to. Uh, by default, uh, SGD classifier was using zero here. So that's why we had so few uh, items labeled as positives. But we could, we could shift it off to the right to be more conservative, or we could be a little bit more liberal, move it off to the left-hand side uh, and capture some more of the, the blue mass. But we'd like to look at that more uh, systematically. So to do that, let's go ahead and look at an ROC curve. And what's nice is that uh, scikit-learn provides a, uh, a nice function for us to, to uh, do this automatically. We've already imported this function into our environment. And uh, it looks like this. Oops, scores. OK, so the ROC curve function takes uh, the true labels and the scores that our classifier produced. And it's going to uh, try out a whole set of thresholds. And it'll give us that array of thresholds that it's trying. And then for each one of those, it's going to tell us what the false positive rate is and what the true positive rate is. So there we go, we now have those. In fact, we have uh, over 3,000 uh, different uh, thresholds and rates. So let's go ahead and uh, plot this. 
I'm going to uh, do something a little bit different plotting wise uh, because it does give us some other capabilities. I'm going to use a, the subplot function. Oops. For those of you who've used MATLAB, there is a notion of a figure, and then within that figure, there are multiple axes. Uh, each axis can have a, uh, a graph of some form uh, sitting inside of it. Um, this, the, same, the notion is the same here. So, so this subplots uh, function from matplotlib uh, returns a tuple, which is a reference to the figure and a reference to the the uh, the default axis that is created uh, within the figure. And then we're going to uh, plot uh, TPR as a function of threshold. We'll plot that in blue. And we're also going to plot two other things. Plot FPR as a function of thresholds as well. We'll make that red. And then let's look at the difference between TPR and FPR. And if you recall, that is our Pierce skill score. And we'll plot that in green. If you recall, when I was drawing our ROC curve, I actually reversed the horizontal axis. We can do the same inside uh, of here. And, and that is the, the function call there. And, th and this, is, uh, this is why I wanted to use this subplot mechanism so we could get to uh, invert x-axis. All right, so let's set labels. Unfortunately, the interface is just a little bit different. Uh, than when we were dealing just with figures. Oops. And then Y label, I'm going to, let's call it fraction and set the font size as well. And finally, let's add a legend. And the legend has TPR and FPR. And uh, we'll call this KS, KS distance. Um, the order of the items in the legend, TPR, FPR, KS distance, have to correspond to the order of our individual plot commands. Let's set that font size as well. And plot that, and there we go. Oops, I thought I set that to green. So let's do that. There we go. So, so here uh, uh, we haven't gotten to our ROC curve yet, but these are our cumulative uh, distributions. And uh, and so uh, at any given threshold, uh, we can we can say what the uh, what the true positive rate is. So at negative one, the true positive rate is somewhere around 0.4, and the false positive rate is somewhere uh, above 0.1, so 0.12 or 0.13 or so. And the difference between the two is indicated by our point on the green. A threshold right here, which looks to be about negative uh, 1.4 or so, maximizes the difference between TPR and FPR. So here, our, our FPR is sitting somewhere around 0.35 or so, and our, uh, our TPR is sitting somewhere around 0.65 uh, or somewhere around there. So a so fairly good size uh, difference between the two. So, so the answer is that th there is a threshold for, for this particular classifier that does a reasonable job of telling the, the, the positives uh, from the negatives. It's certainly far from perfect, but it does an okay job. Okay, so so the, these this cumulative distribution is uh, actually there are two of them. The cumulative distributions are useful to look at, but let's build an ROC curve now. And since it starts off in the same way, I'm going to borrow code that we just wrote. Uh, in this case, we're going to 
uh, plot uh, FPR versus TPR, and we'll put that in color blue. And then I also want that diagonal. So, so let's draw that diagonal too. So I'm, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm saying draw a line from 0, 0 to 1, 1. That's, that's what these pairs uh, correspond to. We we'll draw that in red, and let's draw it in dashed uh, format here. Uh, and, and this is the same uh, specifier that we would use in MATLAB. Okay, X label is uh, FPR and Y label is TPR. And we don't really need a legend for this uh, figure. The only other thing that I want to do is to set the aspect ratio of the two. So we're going to set th that to equal and box. Um, so, so any any time that you're plotting uh, data in say in two axes where the axes have the same units, in this case they're fractions or probabilities, uh, then then you really ought to uh, present the uh, figure properly. What I mean by that is that uh, a, an inch on on the horizontal should correspond to uh, the same. The, an, inch, an inch on the horizontal and an inch on the vertical should mean the same thing in terms of fraction, in terms of probability, or in terms of meters, if we're plotting meters. I, I called this parameter color because I had done a cut and paste, uh, and it's actually not, the, the name of that particular parameter is not color. So I'm gonna go ahead and execute that. And now we have our, our our ROC curve, and you'll notice uh, that we've hit uh, a, an, ac an aspect ratio that is uh, close to one to one. There's, uh, there's still a little bit of warping there. Um, so again, with our R ROC curve, um, this line here is, is the behavior that you would end up with if you had a classifier that did random things, or, or in particular, if it chose the, the, the highest probability class, you, you, it would fall along this line. Uh, so you definitely want your ROC curve to fall above this line, and, and you're in a really bad spot if that curve actually falls below the line. And, and, and it does indeed happen, usually not very, by very much, but it does happen. Um, the fact that there's a, a substantial amount of area here between the red and the blue curve uh, actually suggests that we have a, a reasonable uh, behavior uh, from this classifier. What's also nice about this uh, type of a figure is that one can start to reason about uh, how much we're willing to pay for getting the trues correct or uh, in, in terms of getting the negatives incorrect. So uh, if I want to get my TPR way up high, uh, say uh, at 0.9 or so, then I would sit here on the curve and that means that my FPR is sitting somewhere around uh, 0 0.7, 0 0.75 or so. And, and, and that might actually be a pretty high uh, price to pay to get my TPR up so high. Alternatively, I could end up selecting, uh, this is a pretty conservative point right here. It's, it's sort of that inflection point where the curve starts to turn over to the, to the right-hand side. Uh, here, in order to achieve a TPR of 0.65 or so, I only have to pay a price of an FPR of around 0.35 or so. And, and then the, the other end of the spectrum if I'm only willing to pay an FPR of, uh, of so much, let's see, of say point, uh, point 0.25, then this, uh, sorry, point 0.25 would be right here, uh, point, point 0.125, then I'm only going to be able to achieve a TPR somewhere around point 0.4. 
Um, so, so by looking at this, I can, I can reason about uh, how much I'm willing to pay getting, getting uh, uh, a high FPR might cost me a lot in my decision making process. And, and so I might want to choose to be a little bit more to the left hand side uh, of this curve. Okay, the, the final thing that we uh, talked about with uh, these ROC curves is that sometimes it's nice to just know what the area is under this blue curve. Um, the, the area under the red curve is easy to compute. That is uh, 0.5 because we have a zero to one range here and a zero to one range here. Uh, and the question is, where does this blue curve sit? And nicely, the uh, scikit-learn provides uh, the AUC function, which again, I've already imported into our Python environment. And for that, we just, we just give it FPR and TPR. And there is our area under the curve. It's a very near to uh, 0.7. This is, this is okay. Uh, and again, uh, as that gets higher, uh, our classifier uh, is going to do better if we're smart about picking our threshold. And if, and if we have a really high performing classifier, this curve is going to tend toward reaching to this point here or very near to this point, at, at which point we have something close to an AUC of one. Okay, so that's a first cut at looking at a variety of metrics that measure the performance of our uh, classifiers. There are a variety of other metrics out there. And in, in particular, uh, one case that we worry about a lot is a scenario where uh, the number of positive examples in our training set is exceedingly small relative to the negative examples. And, and so we might actually be wanting to use different kinds of uh, skill scores uh, to measure performance of, of those uh, types of classifiers. So this is a scenario that shows up, say, in a prediction of uh, whether or not a storm is going to generate a, a tornado at some point. As most of the time they don't, and, and occasionally they uh, do. So, so next, the next uh, video, uh, the, the, the topic is uh, we're going to start testing our models a, a little bit more uh, correctly. So far, I've sort of uh, swept some things under the rug, and now, now it's time to be a little bit more formal uh, about our testing process. So we'll pick that up next video.